What's cracking, big dogs? It is Saturday morning, and I know what y'all are thinking. What is Nick doing on YouTube on a Saturday morning? Doesn't he have better things to do? One, no. I could probably be putting out Saturday morning videos throughout the entire year. But I'm like, mm, it ain't the season yet. But now it is. Now it's time to buckle the Frickled down. I got to cut down on the cursing because YouTube stopped monetizing all my shit. And I'm like, I'm out here trying to eat. I'm out here trying to stay in the headquarters. I'm out here trying to provide for the children. And YouTube holding the man down. Saturdays, we will be doing videos. So six days a week for the remainder of the summer. Or what, whatever you want to consider the season that we're in right now. Because Lord knows... It's hot as a motherfucker out here in New York. All right, there goes the first curse. I figured I'd be dropping about 300 of them. We're going to do a mock draft today. A 2020 fantasy football mock draft. I think that most of my Saturday videos will be mock drafts. I think every once in a while, maybe I'll go on and off. Maybe I'll do a live stream Q&A on Saturdays for the Patreon members. You could sign up for on patreon.com slash BDGE, which will also get you access to Big Dogs Redraft Leagues. We are opening paid redraft leagues for Big Dogs starting in August. Uh, but those live streams, I'll do them with the Patreons, but they will be posted on YouTube. So if you want to watch them afterwards, I will never put my content behind a paywall. Okay? So that being said, today we're doing a 2020 Fantasy Football Mock Draft. Last time I did it on Sleeper. This time we're going to do it on the Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard, which I think is probably... You know, those two are probably the best in the industry right now in terms of doing like realistic mock drafts. Um, I would suggest that if you know you're going to be drafting on different platforms, like if you know you're going to be drafting online with your friends on Yahoo or ESPN, I would definitely do some uh, mixing up, create a little cocktail of all the different types of websites out there that do mock drafts so you get a better feel for where the players are ranked and how early some of the guys are going dependent on what website because all these websites are going to have very different rankings very different adps which will affect what happens inside your actual draft and that's more important than ever this year because who knows if live drafts are going to be happening are you going to be able to get 12 of your friends inside one house i bet i don't even have 12 friends so live drafts are off the table for me altogether i've done enough talking i'm ready to go so if you want to know how to do this mock draft we're going to go fantasy pros draft wizard that's all you got to type in a mock draft like peculiar wording for that link so this will be the page that it brings you to we're gonna go 2020 season we're gonna have PPR as always 12 teams we'll randomize that in a second we're gonna do a super flex mock draft because that's the wave that's the wave we're creating we're not just riding it we're making sure that all y'all are switching your leagues over to super flex it makes the quarterback position valuable and it is the most valuable position in all of football so why the fuck is it not valuable in fantasy football? It opens up a lot of trade engagement within your league. You're trading a lot more players. It makes the waiver wire more fun. It makes the drafts more fun. So switch to Superflex. We're doing Superflex mock drafts today. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, two regular flexes, one Superflex. We'll go five bench spots because ain't nobody got fucking time for six bench spots in today's economy. Let's randomize our team. Where are we drafting from? The nine spots. So disrespectful of fantasy pros. We're going to start our draft. All right. So I have found that if I don't get one of the top picks, like if I don't get the top three, four, maybe five picks, I really, 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 really like picking towards the end of the draft because as you'll hear me echo over and over and over and over, like I'm in a goddamn insane asylum, we want to grab our running backs early because the value dips the freak off once you hit rounds four once you hit rounds five derrick henry is currently my number five running back off the board so it goes as you can see the draft picks on the right side here am i kind of in the way let me show you the draft board actually it might be better for y'all uh leave a comment down below how you'd like me to set these up would you just you probably are not, you know what don't do that because i know a lot of you guys would just be like nick just get the fuck off the screen we don't want to see your annoying ass i'm gonna try really hard not to be annoying today this is what we got so far. So this is very indicative of, of what a real super flex draft would actually look like. So I'm happy with the start that Fantasy Pros is integrated into their actual data. Uh, so C-Max, Saquon, Zeke, Alvin Kamara are basically the top four guys there. And those are the top running backs that you want to try to target in the beginning of the 
the first round. And after that, you know, we're probably going to have differing opinions. Some people want Dalvin Cook. Some people want Derrick Henry. But if I'm drafting right now, which I literally am drafting on July 17th, uh, I'm going to take Derrick Henry over Dalvin Cook because we don't know what's going on with the contract situation. We're going to hide drafted players. And uh, I'm not going to dwell on this pick for too long. We're just going to grab Derrick Henry, and we're going to move along. As our RB1, he got the extension. What does that mean? Nothing for 2020 redraft. He was always going to be the guy. Darrington Evans was always a horrible, 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 horrible pick. If you had my rookie dynasty guide, which is available on BigDogDraftGuide.com, you would have already known that Darrington Evans was a terrible rookie pick because in there, months ago, I said Derrick Henry's going to get that extension. Their entire team is revolved around him. What do you think? They're just going to change identity from this year to next year and say, okay, Darrington Evans, here's uh, here's 25 carries for your 202-pound ass after we've literally revolved our entire team around Derrick Henry's running style. And what we do is based around Derrick Henry. So Derrick Henry, very easy pick for me there at the 109 because he's getting 350 carries and who knows maybe he gets a little bit more involved in the passing game i'm not gonna fucking cross my fingers i ain't gonna hold my breath but if it's a you know we fucking everyone just wants to throw around regression positive regression or regular regression okay what if what if he gets 35 targets what if he gets 40 targets this year derrick henry literally could vie for the number one spot in fantasy football so derrick henry Vegas has him as the odds-on leader to lead the league in rushing. Anything in the passing game is just a plus there. So Derek Henry, very happy to get the 109. We're at the 204. And again, man, and some enticing names here in terms of like Tyreek Hill and DeAndre Hopkins. Even Kyler Murray here is interesting. You don't usually see him fall too far. But I'm going running backs, man. Uh, let me get the bigger list of running backs. I want to grab my running backs in the first two rounds. If you don't, you are going to dislike your team this year. I can almost promise you that. And again, this is half PPR. So maybe if you're in a league that has three wide receivers starting or you're in a league that's full PPR, you might start to think a little bit differently. Like maybe you can go with the Devontae Adams here. Or maybe you can go with the Michael Thomas at the end of the first, early second round. Otherwise, I just think it's way more about team building than actually looking at one player versus the other. Other player in 2020 because team building is arguably the most important part of drafting so we have uh nick chubb josh jacobs miles sanders and for me it's no contest i'm going to be choosing between josh jacobs and miles sanders here i love both those sophomore backs jacobs kind of has that unknown i think for nick chubb we kind of know he's just not really going to be involved in the passing game jacobs a lot of projection we were we were excited for him to possibly get that three down roll this year they added a lot of pieces they re-signed Jalen Richard they bring in Lynn Bowden Jr. the rookie who is a very good pass catcher um, they bring in multiple pass catchers outside of the running back position they drafted Brian Edwards they drafted Henry Ruggs you know it, it, it got messy there so we don't really know what the target share there is going to be I'm all in on Miles Sanders this year I don't know why the fuck I'm wasting y'all's time but I will say if I have a bunch of drafts again I always try to diversify the revenue of my players because I'm going to be wrong about a lot of shit this summer as are you so if you feel very strongly about one player and not so strongly about the other player i would say mixing them up is probably a good choice so if i have multiple leagues i'm sitting there and i already got miles sanders at the 204 in one of them and uh josh jacobs is there for the other one i might you know diversify a little bit because i think i think jacobs has a realistic shot to get into the top five as well because i think he could battle henry for uh the league lead in rushing or at least finish like top three or four in rushing yards and again anything in the passing work the passing way will just be added sugar, added salt on top of that Mark Rim. So we're going to go we're going to go with Sanders here and I fucking love this start. We have Derrick Henry of Miles Sanders. Like if this happens in a real league, I'll lose my shit. I'll lose my shitty. Okay, so we're getting down to this is why this is why you need to go with the running backs early because 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 and again, this is super flex, so you're going to see a lot of quarterbacks going off the board early. I'm not too concerned with grabbing my quarterbacks early, to be honest with you, because at the end of the day, the reason that you draft quarterbacks late in one quarterback leagues is because the points per game difference between like quarterback six and quarterback 16 is very, very minimal, while the, while the difference between running back six and running back 16 is way bigger. So think about it this way. like If you're okay with the 16th best quarterback being your starter in a one quarterback league use that same mentality but use that mentality for your second quarterback in a super flex so you don't need to have one high-end quarterback in super flex uh in order to justify your team you just need to make sure that both of them fall within the startable range of players that you're okay starting in one quarterback leagues that's the way i look at it for super flex 
The smaller your league as well, the less important. If it's a super flex league, the smaller your league, I would say 10 teams, 8 teams, the less important it is to grab quarterbacks early because they're much more readily available in the later rounds. So we'll probably continue to fade quarterback. My eye right now... Man, I, I think I you guys probably watched my last video where it was the top 50 overall rankings, and I have soured a bit on Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, and I said, you know, it's probably better that we start looking at him in the, the third round or so. Where are we at right now? We're at the 309, and this is this seems like a pretty damn good spot to, to look at a guy like Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. I've talked about how I really liked him, but there's just so many reports coming out about Damian Williams and how involved they want him to be in the offense that it has to be worrisome. You can't just, you know, fucking that away you can't just fucking chug that away and get it out of your cup because it's a real damn thing like they're really talking about Damian Williams being a big part in this game um so it's possible that the first year Clyde Edwards Hilaire is actually a better football player than a fantasy player for them but I think third round is probably good I, I like George Kittle a lot this year too I mean that was the dumbest fucking statement of all time there's, I don't think there's anyone on earth that doesn't like George Kittle so I'm debating between Clyde I'm debating between George Kittle the way I'll probably look at it is if you pass on Clyde, who's going to be the next running back that you get where you would get the replacement for George Kittle? If I don't go with George Kittle here, I'll be looking to get two of these later round tight ends to pair up, maybe like a Hayden Hurst, Jared Cook in like the seventh, ninth round or like eighth, 11th round, something like that. What running backs will be available there for me to take? Probably no one good. So I think I'd rather probably have the running back. If Clyde Edwards Hilaire hits, like my team is going to be unfucking stoppable between Henry, Miles Sanders, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I'm not talking about wide receivers right now because there's really no reason to. As you can see, there's just an unbelievable amount of wide receivers there. So we'll go with Clyde here in this third round at the 309. This might be a fucked up draft for me. I might actually go right back into running back right now and have my two running backs, my two flex plays as running backs i mean like dude this is this is the year to go with the running backs and i only i only say this because there's one guy left on this list that i really 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 love and he's atop the list right now and it's chris carson if 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 guys hit like if all four of these guys hit or if all four of these guys are good like the positional advantage of having running backs is so is so advantageous in fantasy football man because just like quarterbacks with wide receivers you know having the wide receiver seven as opposed to the wide receiver 20 in your lineup is not a big difference in points per game. But if Chris Carson can fucking uh, finish the year as like the running back 12, as opposed to whoever you're going to get as your next flex play as like the wide receiver, you know, 25 or something like that, his points per game is going to be massively over whatever that wide receiver was. And it helps to build up your team, right? If a running back gets injured, those are the hardest positions to actually replace. If a wide receiver gets injured, easily hit the waiver wire. You can find a starting wide receiver to plug right in. If one of your starting running backs gets hurt, like you are praying that there's something on the waiver wire that you can throw into your lineup. So kind of gives your team depth, but it also gives your team a lot of upside. And I love Chris Carson just because Rashad Penny's going to be out. Carlos Hyde is nothing at this point. He already knows he's the backup, if not the backup's backup for a guy like DJ Dallas. There's really no one to compete with Carson for serious touches. And I brought up, uh, let's find that tweet I had. Nope, that ain't it. TQ. Was that a fucking, who the fuck was that? Chris Carson from, for any of y'all that are on Twitter, uh, this is actually like a very good fucking life hack. If you're ever searching for something, or need to find a tweet from somebody, you just put whatever it is you're looking for, and then you put from, colon, and then the person's name. So anytime I'm looking for tweets that I sent out, there's my boy Chris Carson. Discounting Chris Carson's week 16, where he played on 32% of the snaps before leaving with his hip injury. In 2019, he had 16 or more touches in 93% of the games. 18 or more touches in 86% of the games, 20 touches in 64% of the games, 24 touches. That, that's ridiculous. Listen to that last number. Chris Carson had 24 or more touches in 50% of the games he had last year. If this dude, if this dude enters a year good off the hip injury, I don't want to just say if healthy, but if he is just good to go, if they're going to put him on the field, they're going to give him massive touches. And that's what we're looking for here. I think Chris Carson is extremely underrated uh, all the way down in the fourth round. So, fuck it. We're going to trip. No, we're not going to double up. We're not going to triple up. We're going to quadru quadruple up 
on running backs. And now everyone else, see, it's 12 teams, right? But there's only 32 starting running backs in the NFL and really only like 24 that you want. I already have four of them. So I kind of monopolize the position as well, which means everybody else's team where that position needs to be really, really, really strong is at a disadvantage against me. One thing I probably could have done looking back at how this played out is now I don't like David Montgomery anywhere near as much as I like Chris Carson, but if I wanted to kind of pivot here and go with a uh, a wide receiver, right, go with Robert Woods or DJ Moore, a lot of good names here, AJ Brown even, and go with one of those guys to solidify my wide receiver one spot, I could have taken a David Montgomery or a Le'Veon Bell, who I'm really, really starting to sour on a little bit because... I, I just, all the signs from New York are just saying that they basically don't want to use Bell as much. Bring in other players. They said they're going to lighten his workload. Like, guys, where there's smoke, there's fire. Where there's smoke, there is fire. And Le'Veon Bell's house has multiple chimneys. So, quarterbacks. Do we need to... Let me look at the cheat sheet. <sighs> okay, so, I mean, there's still, like, really good wide receivers on the board here. So, this is why you wait on them. Tight end... I'm gonna be honest with you. I love Darren Waller. I don't. I can't get. I can't get over my infatuation with Waller. I love him so much. He's probably he's probably gonna be my most, my highly, my most highly owned tight end this year in fantasy football, and it's gonna be a problem if he busts. But quarterback, it seems like we still kind of don't really need to push our luck there. Although I might grab my first one in case there's a run. Um, though I don't really need to because this is on the turn pick for me. Good pick by Cam right there. Acres gonna fake. What the fuck does that even mean? Uh, <clears throat> so if I do not go with the quarterback, I can still get one that's probably in the same tier at the 604. Had I been thinking about going to quarterback here, that is where things might get a little risky because obviously I'm not picking again for like another 16 picks. So know the board, know the players, know your league, but understand where you're picking and understand what kind of runs might, might happen, right? Quarterbacks wide receivers I think I probably need to lock up a wide receiver here though Cooper Cup I'm souring on Cooper Cup too because my love for Robert Woods is so strong do I want a safe play or do I want an upside play like y'all know I love Terry y'all lo know I love DJ Dish and Justice Chark out here but I might go with something safer because I've already gotten all the upside in running backs that could single-handedly win my league, so I might just look for points week over week. And someone, uh, I think it was Graham Barfield. Let me see if I could find the tweet for you guys. Honestly, the best advice I can give y'all is to fucking sign up for Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, you're literally 20% of the fantasy player that you possibly could be. So if you do sign up, make sure you're going to follow me at Nick underscore BDGE. And if you're looking for good people to follow, you can just go to my profile, look at the guys I am following, and... Uh, follow yourselves on that he put out a good tweet about Tyler Lockett the other day yes here it is excluding weeks 12 13 when he was on the injured list with that weird fucking shin leg injury Tyler Lockett had 94 12 17 9 across 16 healthy games which included the postseason last year his 16 and a half fantasy points per game in his healthy games would have ranked eighth most among wide receivers y'all have heard me I am not uh on board with the DK Metcalf breakout this year I think he'll be a phenomenal player in the years to come like a Des Bryant type player but for right now I, I still think Tyler Lockett is the one there and I think he gives you a really really nice safety blanket I know you guys are going to fucking roast me for not taking Chark or, or McLaurin here but I think Lockett is extremely safe given that we have Russell Wilson there man there's really not many other things to worry about and in the video I did a couple of weeks ago uh talking about league winning wide receivers you know the correlation realistically for fantasy wide receivers and upside almost always comes back to the quarterback so i'm gonna go with, with t lizzie as my wide receiver one see no quarterbacks go off the board i could get my guys as wide receiver two but i think we might be pushing it there should we should we fucking push our limits here should we push the limits who else would i be looking at if i didn't take an rb i would definitely be looking at kareem hunt here Love DeAndre Swift, too, but I don't think I actually have to move up too much. Darren Waller, my fucking boy. All right, now, nah, fuck it. We going Terry here. We going Terry. We going Terry. We going Terry. Oh, there goes a quarterback. Uh, leave me a couple quarterbacks. That's beautiful. Like, someone took Marlon Mack and Julian Edelman. So, we're at the 709 right now. And my roster is... Where the fuck is my raster? Roster. 
All right, you can see my roster on the left here. Derrick Henry, Miles Sanders, Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin, Clyde Edwards, and uh, those flex plays are just so damn beautiful. Most beautiful thing I've seen since I looked in the mirror this morning. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the worst. Um, also, y'all, if you're enjoying the video thus far, I can't imagine you are, but for some reason you are, uh, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. It lets YouTube know that you do like these videos. And you know what? If we don't get enough thumbs up, I'm not doing Saturday videos anymore. That's a threat. All right, not a request. So hit the damn thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe because we'll be putting out shit like this six days a week now. Skirt. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. What do we got? Oh, Kareem Hunt and DeAndre Swift are still there. Uh, I think it'd be really fucking ignorant of me not to take a quarterback right now. Where's the cheat sheets at? Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. Like, you don't necessarily have to go crazy about quarterbacks. Like, yes, they're more valuable. But there's still a lot of quarterbacks that you'd be okay using. So we have Big Ben, we have Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, Jimmy G, Gardner Minshew, Rivers, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, I'll be fine with any of these two. I think in particular, I probably like Goff. I think he has a much higher ceiling than, like, Cousins is kind of safe. But I'm, I'm worried this is going to be such a run-heavy offense. And without Diggs, like, we're not going to see a lot of those splash plays. Like, Adam Thielen might get 2,000 targets this year, but they're all going to be for the most part, around the line of scrimmage. And all the splash plays that, that Cousins seem to have had over the last year, two years, three years, have come with Stefan Diggs, it feels like. It feels like Stefan Diggs catches four balls a game, and if they're not screen passes behind the line of scrimmage, they're like 60-yard shots. So I'm, I'm actually very, very nervous about Cousins here. Goff, I'm worried about the offense, but I think that they'll probably uh, need to throw the ball a lot. I think that's just like part of their game plan and who they are. So we'll go with Goff here as my quarterback one. There goes a small QB run. Uh, they took my boy Minshew. So I might take I might take Teddy here. I love Teddy. I love Derek Carr too. It's kind of fucked up. You guys will fucking banish Ed me if I take Carr over these guys. But dude, Derek Carr, man, I'm kind of all in on Derek Carr this year as like a late quarterback too. Even though I could probably wait on him, take a different quarterback and have him as my three, which would probably be the smarter play. Yeah, I'm not going to take him now. I don't think I'll need to. So we'll lock up the second quarterback spot with... I think Jimmy G is kind of risky. This Not risky, but he's another one where they might go very, very, very run heavy. And I mean, in San Fran, they're obviously going to. But now without Debo, it worries me a little bit. It worries me. Jimmy G had like four or five good games last year, and they were all against really terrible defenses. So I don't know, man. Drew Locke, also kind of scary. I, I, I really just don't want my quarterback to bust. Like, just give me someone who's going to be steady... 250 two touchdowns week in and week out I think Rivers should do that I think uh I, like I said I really like Teddy Bridgewater with the offense with Joe Brady um coming in and all the playmaking weapons around him so you know what we're gonna settle for we're gonna go with we'll go with Rivers here I think he's a solid bet to finish like 4100 passing yards this is the first time I think I've mocked Rivers to my team okay Yep, I didn't really have to go with the quarterback there, but we did, and it worked, and whatever, whatever, whatever. So we are sitting there. Where are we in the ninth round at the 909? We have our two quarterbacks. We have our four running backs. Beautiful. Wide receivers, tight ends. So, yeah, see, I, I didn't have to reach for a tight end because there's still a lot of guys that if I pair up two of them, I'll feel good about together. Um, definitely lacking on the wide receivers. I think my team is a lot more high upside than it is safe at this point because I went so heavy on the running backs. Um, but I think that's what wins you chips. You're in a 12-team league. You need upside, people. Um, but I think I think like the floor of all four of these running backs will give me like a weekly absolute dominant advantage over most of my league mates. So we will look at wide receiver. See, the thing about I'm not about to take a wide receiver just out of sheer necessity because like I would much rather have Darius Geis. I would rather even have Sony Michelle. Uh, maybe even Damian Williams as the handcuff to Clyde, but this is probably a little early for that. I don't think I'm wasting a ninth round pick on, on D will, but I think there's a couple guys I still like, including Matt Breda. Like I straight up, I, I would take Darius Geis over any of these wide receivers. Just, I'm not taking them just for the sake of being like, Oh, here's my third wide receiver guys. I, I still think guys has crazy, crazy upside. Like guys just turned 23 years old. I don't think people realize just how young Darius Geis is. So one year, one year of good production of staying on the field, even for like 14 games, people are going to realize how talented he is. And then he's able to rewrite the rest of his career. Like Frank Gore came in ACL tears. Like there are a lot of guys who suffered injuries early on 
if Geis had suffered all these injuries and he was like 25 and a half entering his 26 season, I would not even think about drafting him. But he's still so young. He's still got so much time to prove that what he was in college is still the player he is. So I, I'm actually going to go with Geis here um, because I still think he has a lot, a lot, a lot of upside. No wide receivers went off the board. I can grab my third quarterback. No tight ends went off the board. Yikes. So I'm actually kind of grab. I took, uh, glad I took Geis because the run was a little bit running back heavy. So it went Slayton, James White. I'll give you guys a minute to look at the board right now. Uh, let me scroll up a little bit. Mm. Can I move me? That's probably better over here, huh? Uh, I could do this for you. I already told you guys to follow me, and I trust that you did so. Move down there, move it down here. Bing, bang, boom. Miss Pruden's in the room. All right, so we are through almost 10 rounds, and these are the draft mates thus far. Let's look at some strategies here. What teams do I like? So Green, Eggs, and Hamler went with Kelsey, Ertz, and Ingram. I don't know about all that, sir. That's an odd-looking fucking team. I'm not going to break down because my eyes are going to keep going everywhere, and then I'll never be able to actually settle on one thing to talk about. So we're going to continue drafting. I do want to take a very, very quick minute to uh, plug our draft guide. Uh, if you think any of the analysis I'm giving today is good, trust me, all of the content I put out throughout the summer is basically beautifully packaged and organized into our draft kit this year. The easiest way to get our draft kit is through monkeyknifefight.com. They are sponsoring the draft guy this year. The easiest way to support our brand, literally the $10 that you're going to throw on Monkey Knife Fight goes a very, very, very long way for us, again, in keeping food on the table for our kids like snacks and animal. Uh, Monkey Knife Fight is sponsoring us. So if you go over to monkeyknifefight.com, and you use the promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 on their site, one, they're going to give you $25 to play with. They give you a free five, plus they match your initial deposit. Uh, play a game of $2 on their site, and within 24 hours, I will email you access to all three draft guides that we have twerking this summer. The season-long guide, the rookie dynasty guide, and Dr. Morse's complete injury guide, Dr. Morse. So the fantasy doctors, the man knows what he's talking about. This is the best value out there in fantasy sports right now. I can fucking promise you that. So the easiest way, again, to support is monkeyknifefight.com. Promo code BDGE when you deposit $10. And you'll get an email within 24 hours. If you are in a state that's not eligible for Monkey Knife Fight, unfortunately, you could still cop the guide. But it's at full price on Big Dog's Draft Guide. Dot com and within the draft guide, here's all the good shit that you're gonna get. Ooh. All of our rankings, standard half PPR, full PPR, super flex, top 200, big board, printable, our undervalued players, our sleepers, the official fade, do not draft. There's just a whole lot of shit in here. I ain't gonna read it to you. You guys can read, hopefully, otherwise. Maybe you can't read. Maybe you just come on YouTube because you could see things and you could hear things, but you don't know how to read. Uh, then that's the problem. Go screenshot this and send it and show it to your sister, show it to your mother. And uh, also send me <clears throat> nudes. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk mock drafts. Monkeyknifefight.com promo code BDGE. Where are we? Where are you going? And if along the road, Shep, Anthony Miller. See, I haven't gotten a tight end yet. Haven't got a third quarterback yet. Haven't got a third wide receiver yet. Uh, I think I'm. <laughs> I'm going to go with Teddy B here. I'm going to stick with my guns, get my third quarterback. I think I think that's just not a pick you're going to regret. I think you'll be feeling good. Feeling good. Oh, man, the tight end just ripped off the board. You'll be feeling good as long as you get a solidified third quarterback. Again, there are bye weeks. There are busts. There are injuries. Uh, you don't want to be stuck in a super flex league without a third quarterback, and I'm feeling good about Teddy this year. So we don't have our third wide receiver. I'll keep reiterating that too. I don't know why. I'm wasting my time. But Tyler Higby's still sitting there. And I, I'll be honest, man. I am uh, a little bit worried about Tyler Higby. I just don't I just don't like betting on small sample sizes. I know he was great over the last month of the season. But like more often than not, small sample sizes, especially at the end of the year, turn into traps. They almost, oh, not always, but a, a lot of the time they turn into traps. And I actually love Jared Cook this year. Uh, you'll see in my rankings possibly. Uh, let's see. Which is also, guys, this is in the draft guide. Season-long rankings, super flex, one quarterback league rankings. 
Jared Cook is let's go to tight ends. I'm going to be way higher on Jared Cook than consensus. I love him this year. I think he was so good once he got back healthy. Drew Brees got hurt. He got hurt. Once they were both on the field, I think over the last half of the season, he was like the tight end two or three. So as you can see there, I am really high on Jared Cook. He's my tight end six this year. I don't know if I have to draft him here, though. Um, we might be able to just double down Higby and Cook. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to have to draft Higby before Cook. Oh, uh, fall to me, baby. Oh, oh, that was beautiful. Look at the board. Look at it. Look at it. This is why this is why I'm a goat. Didn't really make sense. I'm the goat because Jared Cook fell to me in the 12th round. See, I'm doubling down on late round tight ends. I think Jared Cook's going to be a staple week in and week out. But what if Higby was the real thing? What if last year, towards the end of the year, those numbers you put up are going to sustain over the next year, which is not going to happen. But if it does, then I'm looking at two great tight end plays, and I'm feeling damn good about it. So now we need to look at wide receivers, and this is fucking ugly ugly i'm gonna have to settle for some some rookies i suppose i don't know why everyone's sleeping on hunter renfro like he's not the god it's actually quite disrespectful oh i should have just waited on quarterback huh could have got kirk or Derek carr i'm definitely not looking at running backs right now i had five running backs all of them with plenty of upside so cd lamb jerry judy golden tate i i think i'll take golden tate here i think he's the safest um i think he is a, is a pretty big part of that offense, especially when a guy like Evan Ingram, who's got a screw in his fucking foot, gets hurt. So we're going to just double back down, double right, ooh, excuse me, double fucking bite down on uh, Nikhil Harry. I want to see, I, I still think there's tons of upside with Nikhil Harry. I want to see what kind of chemistry we can get between Cam and Nikhil Harry. I think if it goes the right way, Nikhil Harry could easily be a top 24 fantasy wide receiver this year. And that rounds out my team. Y'all are going to shit on me. Um with the wide receivers but look at oh oh that actually makes me feel kind of shitty to be honest i hate when they give me good grades after drafts 94 out of 100 projected standings let's see bing bang boom my team is second uh starters my team is first obviously bench who give the fuck about a bench who give a fuck about a bench okay where's my roster your team okay so we have quarterback one this is like so sloppy. Where is my team? Share. Tweet the results. Share on Facebook. Get a short link. All right. So I'm going to put the link to this draft board in the description down below. So you guys can go check it out at any time. My affiliate code BD. You know affiliate for what? I don't pay for shit. All right. So there you can see my team on the right side there. You have Derek Henry, Miles Sanders, Clyde Edwards, Lair, Chris Carson, Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin. I think that's a great pairing of wide receivers because I think Terry has real legitimate upside. And I think Tyler Lockett has fantastic floor. Jared Goff, Phillip Rivers, Teddy Bridgewater, quarterback. Again, not a big deal that you don't have a solidified like high-end quarterback one in super flex. The value of the overall position goes up because the scarcity comes down, but the scarcity goes up as well. You all know what the fuck I mean. It's just the points per game difference between the top guys and the bottom guys is not that big of a difference. So I'm more of a volume than a quality guy. And Darius Geis in the ninth round just feels really good after getting these four running backs. If he doesn't hit, whatever. It's the ninth round. If he does hit, good lord. Tyler Higby, Jared Cook. I actually really, really like this team. I know probably halfway through the year I'm going to be pissed about those wide receivers, but I feel really good for right now. All right, so that's what we got for this Saturday's video. Next week, I think I'm going to do Q&As, which will be live on Saturdays for the Patreon. So, again, patreon.com slash B-D-G-E which is where you will get access to the Q&A. So you guys will be the ones to actually answer my questions, or you guys will be the ones that ask, ask, ask the questions. Let me pull up the... Uh, I didn't even make a fucking graphic for it. God damn. Let me see if I can pull this in here. Animated overlays. Add animated overlay. Hey, oh, they let me put animations within the... Yo, Ecamm Live is the best fucking platform for creators. So, uh, Patreons get access to our leagues. One. Get back here. Get back here. There you are. You get access to our leagues, which have opened up. We already have like 125 Dynasty Leagues. So, if you, I mean, if you're still in Dynasty mode, you want to do a startup, paid leagues, $25, $50, $100 leagues. This is how you'll get access because you get access to our Discord channel, which has about 3,000 members in it right now. You'll get access to our paid redraft leagues. Um, you'll get my in-season weekly rankings dur during the fucking year because I don't put them out 
anywhere else. And you'll get access to the weekly Q&A live stream that I will be doing possibly starting next Saturday. But in the season, I do at least one every single week for the Patreons. Again, I will be posting any of the support that you guys give me, whether it's just a thumbs up or a comment down below to hit me with that algorithm boost or subscribing to the channel is much, much, much appreciated. But if you want extra value, if you want all of my thoughts kind of organized into one beautiful place, uh, the draft guide is where you should do that, monkeyknifefight.com. And then Patreons obviously get an extra little value boost, whether you want to join a league, you want to join a community on Discord, you want my rankings, you want the Q&A. whole lot of gang shit we're doing over here at Big Dogs Gotta Eat. I love you for sticking with me this Saturday. Uh, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you all on Q&A Monday. Peace.